everybody. This is Big Stack Numismatics. I want to welcome all my fellow coin collectors out there. It is Saturday, March 26th, and although it is uh, technically spring and beautiful sunny day, it is 20 degrees outside, and uh, perfect time to be looking at uh, some coins here and talking through. You see in front of you my early American commemorative coin checklist, and that can only mean that we have another edition and another coin to check off this list. I'm um, very, very happy to take a look at this one. This is the 1936 uh, Elgin Commemorative Half Dollar. Let's take a look. The obverse, you see a picture of a settler uh, facing off to the left. And... Uh, MS-66 Plus. All right. Very, very, very uh, flat strike, but um, quite a bit of mint luster. All right, let's take a look, take a look at the reverse here. There's a picture of uh, a grouping of settlers. Five settlers, four adults, and a, and a little baby. Quite a bit of toning around the rim, you know, especially up to there. So there you go. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this coin. So 1936 was a year where many, many uh, commemorative coins were issued. Uh, out of that year, probably, I don't know, 18 or something like that, 15 to 18. Um, kind of a, a quite a few dumped <laughs> on the coin collecting market all around the same time, which really helped lead to, uh, in my opinion, the, the overflow is one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of uh, commemoratives issued anytime uh, after, let's say, the George Washington Carver just about uh, 15 or 16 years after this. But there was quite a few in that, those, uh, the 1930s. Um, in this specific piece, this is, uh, this coin was designed by sculptor uh, Trigve, Trigve, Trigve Rovelsed. And uh, he was a resident of El Elgin, Illinois. His parents were Norwegian immigrants. And uh, he wanted to um, make a basically a big sculpture for the city of Elgin of immigrants um, as a commemorative for that city to, um, to just show and, and kind of celebrate his city. Um, and so this coin came about as a result of trying to raise money for that project. And um, going in front of Congress and issuing the, the request uh, authorized 25,000 coins to be minted. And um, ultimately, 20,000 were sold, 5,000 were returned to the mint and melted for a total uh, mintage of 20,015 coins. And I believe they were sold at about $1.50 a piece. Um, unfortunately for Trigva, the, his mission to see his um, sculpture erected in a, like a local park um, did not happen during his lifetime. He did all the work. Um, but it took um, until after his death uh, for a foundation to be created to additionally come up with extra funds. And it was completed um, in the year 2001, I think about uh, 11 years after he died. Um, but this, if you take a look right here at this scene, um, he did successfully design and implement this structure. I'll show you a picture right here. So there you go. That's what it looks like all fleshed out, and you can go and see that right now in the city of Elgin. So, pretty cool. All right, let's look at some of the details on this specific coin. If I go to the uh, PCGS certification verification page, all right, you'll see here that's uh, issued in Min State 66 plus. Um, there's 79 that exist in this grade at PCGS, and 318 in a higher uh, condition. And right now it's showing a book value, uh, recently raised in value to $375. Let's take a look at the price history. 
what you're going to notice from the price history page here is like many of these commemoratives um, for about the first, let's say, 15 years or so, you know, the it was worth between, you know, $75 and $125 for quite a while. You get, as soon as you get to the early 80s, between 1982 and 1988, it skyrocketed in value from $300 to $3,000. <laughs> Peaks around $5,000 uh, at the end of the 80s, and then very quickly um, over the course of the next, let's just say, five years, back down to under thousand dollars and then once we get to the year 2000 stabilizes um, at around four hundred dollars goes back up to about 675 in 2010 and then plummets all the way back down so here we are at uh, um, let's say August 1st 2019 325 dollars um, I picked this up for around 350 um, about a year ago and now we're up to about 375 book value wise, of course. Um, it's so interesting for me to see these charts um, and what the, the values contend. Um, but again, it's always supply and demand, of course. And uh, in recent years, of course, in the 90s and 2000s, a lot more of these coins um, located and, of course, graded um, means that there's way more of them available now than there were in the 80s, at least at the perceived um, grades that these coins would command, um, the values they would command at least. Um, so yeah, let's take another quick look here. Another high grade condition coin for my collection. It's getting kind of fun to take all these out and look at them. And of course, uh, mark them off the checklist. In fact, let's do that right now. So, here is the checklist. Kind of scan through where we're at. Still plenty to go. Some of the the high profile ones I've picked up first, the Oregon Trail, of course, being one of them, the Texas with this great design. And of course, the first three, which are some of the, the Lafayette dollar and the Isabella, those are probably among the harder ones to locate that I was successfully able to do. All right, so here we go, right here, 1936, Elgin, Illinois Centennial. We'll go ahead and add that to our list. Feels pretty good. One more in the book. So, you know, as I mentioned, as far as collecting these commemoratives, it's it's more and more exciting as my collection gets larger, uh, as far as these go. Um, I'm going to continue to try to locate um, coins that I don't have, but there will come a time where you're really, I'm really going to have to spend out of pocket more than I'd like to, to fill in some of the gaps. Um, it's just hard to locate some of these coins, especially in the conditions that I'm used to picking them up in. So I might have to um, go ahead and get some examples that are not uh, graded as high just because I don't have the funds to be able to do that. But um, that's okay. I'm not in any hurry. So I'm just going to kind of keep on getting what I can get. So, all right. That's all I have for you today. Um, just a couple of things from the U.S. Mint News. I saw that... Uh, Many of you have posted about how the fact that the U.S. Mint is not going to be um, producing any 2022 peace dollars or 2022 Morgan dollars, and uh, all for the simple reason that they can't source the silver planchets in order to be able to make those those strikes. And I just, it's just a huge disappointment, I guess, in the terms of uh, what the mint is is just basically going. Yeah, can't get it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not that I would be a, a purchaser of those coins in that year necessarily, but just just to basically wipe that off the, the thing and say, hey, we're just not going to pursue those things. Um, just seems really, really weird to me. But um, lots of mixed thoughts on that. Um, the Mint uh, is, is definitely um, has more of a negative connotation with it in recent years in terms of um, not just uh, you know inability to source out products and huge back orders, but also the problems that are arise when you're trying to, to order coins and how hard that process is and how in 
this day and age, we sh there should be a smoother process. <laughs> but either way, it's just uh, I find that interesting, um, the news that they're not going to be making those for next year. But all right. Um, real quick, I'm just going to ask you, if you don't mind, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, I sure would appreciate it if you'd uh, uh, do so. Try to get to over a 1,000 subs here. Um, as fast as I can. I've been uh, almost full year in making the videos for this channel and I would really, really love to get to a thousand subscribers so I could uh, get to that next level on YouTube and actually monetize my account and all that kind of business. So I'd appreciate it if you consider that. But regardless, I appreciate you stopping by. This is Big Stack Numismatics. And I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Have a good one.